Uh, Michael, first off, uh, obviously coming in quick succession to difficult games, is it ideal to be playing Portsmouth after what happened for them on Saturday as well? Uh, not ideal, I suppose, no. Um, not just Saturday, I think, obviously, the Ben and Rich vein of form at the minute. Um, I think it was mentioned they haven't actually played that many games in the league because of the success they've had in the Cups. Obviously, the through to the, the fifth round of the FA Cup now um, and obviously doing really well in the leasing.com which are they holders? Yes. Yeah, yeah the holders, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so obviously um, it's probably just goes to show the strength and depth they've got in the squad, the quality they've got in the squad, um, the size of the club they are in our division. Obviously they've got obviously massive backing uh, at home every week. Um, and Obviously, start the season when we went down there, they were having an indifferent period um, and we had lots of opportunities in the first half to, to you know, punish them a little bit, um, concede a goal against the runner play a little bit and from then on, obviously, they've, they've been climbing the table and they're probably now where they think they should be in around that playoff spot, uh, then playoff spaces and um, it's going to be a difficult game. They've got some talented players, especially in forward areas, um, that we really need to take care of on the night. Uh, are you expecting them to be any different from what we saw at Fratton Park? As you say, the, the, the two sides in terms of form are completely mm. different between then and now. Probably just confidence, yeah. Um, when we went down to Fratton early in the year, sorry, last year, um, they, they lacked a little bit of confidence. You could tell that on the night and... We missed the trick in the sense of not getting that first goal against them because um, that would have made it really, really difficult for them. Um, as it happened, they got the they got ahead, um, and you know they they seen the game out. But I think now they full of confidence, so they they'll come in expecting to win the game. Um, but you know we've we've done pretty well here of late, um, and even on Saturday. Um, we had massive opportunities in that first half to punish it, which, you know, watching it back on the coach on the way home, just four or five glaring opportunities to really punish them, and, and we didn't take it. Uh, we didn't even give ourselves a chance of it. Um, so on the back of that, knowing that if we have a situation where a lot of our players were probably six out of ten on Saturday, um, which isn't enough to win you a game at Ipswich, but the fact that we were still in the game with 10 minutes to go and one nil down and them not really create that many chances probably just goes to show what a good, honest group we've got. Um, a lot of their goals in recent weeks, it seems, have come from set plays. How important would it be to be able to, to defend not just the first ball, but a lot of their, their goals seem to be coming off the, the second ball back into the, the area? Well, we've got a big group, obviously. Um, that was something we got punished with down at their place. Burgess is obviously very strong in the air and obviously everyone knows Raggett here. So um, we know that that is a big part of their armoury. Um, it's something that Kenny has been very, very good at as a coach with his teams over the years. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's one part of what they are good at. Um, but they have got some good players as well, like I've said, in, in them forward areas. Um, players that most managers up and down the country would be happy to uh, take if they got the opportunity. Um, but we have to be resolute from them situations. I think that the biggest thing for me is that if they've got strength and their strength is set plays, is one, yes, you have to defend them and defend them well, but I think first and foremost, not give silly free kicks away. You know, If you don't give silly free kicks away in your half the field, they can't put the ball into your box. Um, so that's something that we'll be looking to improve. Uh, transfer and loan wise, any movement before tomorrow night expected? Um, I wouldn't say expected, hope, yeah, more than anything. Um, yeah, I think we're pretty much where we were before the game, sorry, after the game on Saturday at the minute. Um, but that doesn't mean to say, obviously, you know, Friday, it's a long week, it will be a long week. Um, whether it helps having a game in between, I'm not too sure. Um, but um, if there is something that's done before before Tuesday, um, I'll be happy. But if not, I certainly won't be too concerned, knowing that obviously the deadline's not until Friday. Yeah, and the, all what you said at the start of this window, the plan is on Friday to not be here at 9 o'clock in the evening worrying about whether you're going to lose someone or, or, or try and get someone in. Do you feel you're still on course for that? 
I'd like to think so, because I don't envisage that being the case. Um, so, yeah, um, well, for a starters, we won't be here because we're on our way to South End. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'd like to think by certainly close the Bay Thursday, we'll know exactly what's going to happen and where we're going to be for the following day. And is the Friday switch everybody's phones off? <laughs> Yeah, so, well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's one of them. I mean, it, you, you don't want to lose. You don't want to lose important players. It'll be the same for every manager up and down the country. Um, you know what it has been because of the likes of Sky Sports News, etc. It's been fated at it for for a number of years. Um, probably even more so January than August um, or July because it is such a short month and short window. Um, for some reason, everyone seems to scramble on the last day and, and try and get things over the line, which I understand because, you know, for for clubs in the in League One and League Two especially, um, we're not blessed with massive squads, or the majority of us are not blessed with massive squads, so you don't want to get caught short. Lovely, thank you. Um, are you happy with what's happened so far in this transfer window, Michael, in terms of players who've come in, players who've gone? Is it gone according to plan, would you say? Yeah, it's, I think so. Yeah, yeah, it seems to have. I mean, obviously, you know, we've, we've lost some good players, but we've lost um, players that I think naturally, over a period of time, would have left anyway. Um, we've brought some players that um, we hope to develop, um, whether that be for other sides, but will benefit us in the short term or for us going long term. So, um, what we have got is we've got a good group of young players who, as you've seen on Saturday, can be a little bit inconsistent in terms of the mental side of it, not necessarily the, the, the physical and the technical side of it. So, we get that, we understand that, that's fine. Um, it'll be good for them, it'll be good for us. So, let's see what happens over the next few days and if we can add to. What said it'd have been quite an exciting window. I know we mentioned it on Saturday, but are you hoping to find about about some of your loanees sort of imminently? So in case anything does happen, you can get the place. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you can only push it so far, can't you? Yeah. When the other club are in control of the situation, but um, we have asked them to be as respectful as they possibly can and um, try to, you know, get them to give us as much information as they can, either whether it be today or certainly absolute latest on Wednesday, because obviously then at least you've got 48 hours to do something about it. Uh, and I'm sure they will be, because we've been very respectful of the way we've looked after their players over the, the last few months. Is it tricky at all to keep the players focused during this time, or are they just oblivious to it and just you know, let the people behind the scenes deal with it? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think players... And I mean this in the nicest sense of the word. Are very selfish, you know, and 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 I think you know they look after number one. And I think to be to be fair, I think I think that's how it should be because as a coach and a manager, you want them to be quite focused on what they're doing and not really worrying about what's going on off the pitch. Um, so I don't mind that to a degree, as long as you know it's sensible off the field and, and like I say between both clubs, things are happening and, and ticking along okay. What do you make of the transfer window in general? Do you think it, there should be one in January? Um, no, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan, if I'm being honest. I think, I think, um, yeah, pers that's just my personal opinion. I think you should be able to bring in players as and when you see fit, if you've got the budget to do it or if you haven't got the budget to do it. And, um, I, I can understand some of the arguments why you want to do it, um, but no, it's not. I did prefer the, uh, the old system. Because I think the school thought that it perhaps leads to having a, a deadline that leads to panic signings mm. and finance in football is a big topic at the moment anyway mm. and you fear that clubs are going to get themselves into trouble. It, it, certainly, it certainly gives them more scope to, to get themselves in trouble, doesn't it? Um, I think... If you do, if, I think if you do your due diligence properly and you, you pr prepare properly, you won't put yourself in a position anyway where you put the club at risk or the club allows it to be put itself at risk. Um, if you find yourself in a situation where you're doing too much business on the deadline day, you know, you, you probably ask your question sometimes, was the work being done beforehand? Mm. Um, having said that, 
there is opportunities that do come up in the last couple of days of the window that probably wasn't there beforehand. Yeah. So you can do all that preparation, get yourself in a position where you think you're happy. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, a player becomes available um, through whatever reason. Uh, and it can be too good to turn down sometimes. So as it stands, is the priority a, a central defender and then, as you say, see what comes up, a player perhaps you weren't expecting might become available? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly <coughs> two or three positions that we're looking at at the minute uh, and we're in dialogue with clubs, um, but we're mindful of the fact that, like I say, we won't put ourselves at risk. Mm. Um, you said you watched the game on the way home on the bus? On Saturday, did you watch it all the way through? Or yeah, I, I, is that normal? Especially on a, on a longer journey, yeah. yeah. I always sometimes I'll wait until Sunday and let my emotions yeah. sort of uh, come come back to normal as such. But um, yeah, I mean, like I say I do it quite often. To be fair, um, you just watch it on your iPad or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. The lads, yeah, are, the lads are very, 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 very quick to uh, make sure they switch it from um, the laptop down to the iPods and stuff yeah. and. Um, yeah, I mean, some I do quite regularly anyway and gets rid of the bus journey. Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, mate. Is there any uh, fresh injury news, Michael, or is it the same as before? Yeah, pretty much the same. A couple of knocks from, from Saturday. A uh, couple of lads picking up dead legs, but I don't envisage it to be too much of an issue for Tuesday. What do you and the coaching staff perceive the contributory factors are to what you described again after another 1 0 defeat, which we're having a series of, as poor decision making? Mm. What do you think is contributing to that? If, if you mean in terms of uh, defending, I think, I think on Saturday the, the thing that we were guilty of in the first half was giving too many cheap free kicks away. Um, and again, if we do that, on Tuesday against Portsmouth, who obviously a good set play side, you're going to put yourself under severe pressure. Obviously, it's which you look at their lineup compared to lineup, and from a physicality point of view and height, they're much bigger than us. So we have to make sure that we nullify that and don't allow them to put the ball into our box. I think in terms of attacking wise, <clears throat> if you look at the situation on Saturday, there was five occasions in the first half. Where, t where we had 2v2 or even 3v2 in our favour. Yeah. Five occasions. Uh, and normally, normally, you'd, you'd think at some point within them five occasions, you'd have at least two where you had a 1v1 with a keeper. Um, and we didn't get any of them. You know? So uh, the players know that. They're not daft, they're not stupid. They know we, we, we missed an opportunity on Saturday. Um, because at worst, I expected us to go in at half-time nil-nil didn't think they really threatened us in any way, shape or form. So to go down 1-0, that was the message at half-time. Listen, come on, we've missed an opportunity here to put them under the sword. Um, so yeah, little things like that, Chris, really, like a misplaced pass, heavy touch, um, deciding to take a shot on from an area that probably the best choice was a pass. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, them decisions will be a little bit better on Tuesday. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, mate.